Hey Queen, how you doing? This is your boy David Padilla. You know me from Macy's and then you're my girl. But listen, what I do for the holidays, I do a mean paella. And I saw your show one day and you had a young lady do her cooking. I'm going to show you what I do for the holiday. It's called paella. It's a Spanish dish. We're going to start it off first. Get this pot rolling a little bit. First thing I'm going to do right quick, I'm going to add chicken wings. Okay, put them in there to cook. Stir them a little bit. While the chicken gets ready, it's going to cook by itself. No seasoning needs to be ready. After that, um, actually what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut up a turkey sausage. While that chicken is cooking, I'm going to add it in there, slice it up as much as you want your way. First, this at a time. I usually add about three turkey sausages. I'm actually cutting up one. I have a bowl here that has two more already cut up. Okay, we're going to add that to the chicken while the chicken is cooking. You can actually hear that simmering. We'll give that a few minutes to cook. I'm going to put a lid on it right now for a minute. While that's cooking, I'm going to add another cup of shrimp. Each shrimp, I devein it personally. You know you have to devein the shrimp. Take out the middle of the shrimp. At all times, you always devein your shrimp every time. You take out that little piece, of course, nobody wants to eat that. Put that inside. And of course, you rinse out all your shrimp. I have all my shrimp already cut. It's a bowl of shrimp that's also gonna go inside. This paella is going to consist of chicken, turkey sausage, shrimp. Right here, while the chicken is cooking, I actually have a can of Goya beans. I already took the beans, rinsed them off, because you know the beans have the preservative. You don't want to eat on that preservative. So I washed them off and I put them in a the bowl here. I added it with a half a cup of corn. All this is going to go in together. And what I have here is a cup of pitted olives that's going inside. And what you're hearing right now is probably the chicken that's cooking. Okay, I'm going to add, to put a little spotted, one quarter cup of water to the kitchen to get it started. Okay, let that cook again for a few minutes. While that's cooking, I'm going to add, I'm actually going to clean the rice. A lot of people do not clean their rice. I'm going to cook one cup. This is actually two cups of rice. You put the cup of rice in here. I like to clean off my rice. And there's a reason why. People don't clean off their rice. Rice has starch in it. And this is something my mother taught me how to do for many years. You always clean off your rice at first. The rice will be the last thing to go in this dish. Okay, we'll put this to the side for one second while that's cooking. We're going to go right back again to the chicken. As you can see, the chicken wings are already cooked. It takes no time at all to cook this real quick. Then, while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and add my turkey sausage that's already chopped up. We're going to mix that together as well. Make sure that gives a nice stir while that's cooking. 
Again, I like to use turkey sausage. You could use any kind of sausage you want. You like pork sausage. You could use beef sausage. But I personally like turkey sausage. Okay, that goes in there. The next thing that's going to go inside, we're going to add our beans and our corn. Pour that in there. Stir it around. Okay. At that point, I'm going to add my seasoning. I'm going to use two cup, two pans of, excuse me, of sazon achote. That's going to actually give it that nice flavor, and it makes the red, the rice, look nice and red. Soy beans. If you was here, you would smell how beautiful this smells. Delicious already. It's cooking. Put that to the side. I'm going to sprinkle some garlic on top of this. You know, there's nothing like having a garlic with Puerto Ricans. You know, we cook with garlic. And of course, our adobo. Adobo goes on top of it as well. Give it a little sprinkle. At this point, I already put one third of water. Now remember, this is two cups of rice. Whenever you cook rice, you have to have four cups of water, two cups per cup of rice. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add one cup of water. And remember at the beginning, I usually put one third, so I'm not gonna put the water all the way to the top. I'm gonna go three cups of water. Put that in there. I'm gonna actually stir it up so I can start to cook everything at one time. The last thing that's gonna go in this dish before is the shrimp. You don't wanna put the shrimp right away because the shrimp cooks so quickly. You're gonna stir that up for a few seconds. That is already cooking up. And if you was here, Queen, you can see how delicious this smells. Put that in there to cook for one second. Oh, I forgot. We add one cup of minced olive. Take the pits out. They have the pits already inside. Put that to the side. Got to have olives in your rice. We're going to bring this to a boil for one second. Cover that up. Again, we're going to get back to my rice. Like I said, I like to clean my rice up. And we're going to take that water out. As you can see, it's if you look in the pan, it's starchy. We're going to take all that starch out. You don't want that. Rinse off the rice very well. Give that a second. Make sure this comes to a nice little boil. Mm. You can actually smell all these seasonings together with the garlic, the turkey sausage, the chicken. Again, the shrimp hasn't gone in yet. We're gonna wait till this cooks in just a few more minutes. Now, this is a recipe that's been in my family for many years. My mother taught me how to do this. Everybody cooks paella differently. Some people add mussels, some people add different, but this is David Paella's Paella. And I have my neighbors come around, my friends come around for the holidays because they know I cook this all the time. But I won't tell them the secret. The secret stays with me. Give that a second. Watch the fire again. We're going to let that come to a boil. While that's cooking, we're going to talk a little bit about my kitchen. Notice here the designs on my kitchen. I actually went ahead with the black and white look. I got these cups, really nice, crystal. All these I made myself. I got these from stores. I built these here to put them down. This is all strictly for decoration. 
This is not for use, it's for decoration. I got the black and white concept. I like it. It makes the kitchen look really nice and rich. And again, we're going to go over here to my shelf. If you notice, a lot of these appliances I bought from the store that I work because Macy's. Everything is black and silver. I got the um, blender for Macy's, this cook for Macy's, and this is a Mr. Coffee pot. Of course, every kitchen is no kitchen without a Mr. Coffee. Now, I want you to look at this. This was given to me by my brother. This is really cool. You might think it's a bottle of wine. I got a trick for that. It actually opens up. And these are the tools when you have wine, they take the screw pot off. I love this. My brother bought this. Everybody looks at it different. So you got a bottle of wine? No. When I open it, they really get shocked. We can go back to that. Again, Queen, I want to go up to here. I want you to look at the top of my cabinets. All of these I've done myself. And if you look actually at the cabinets, this cabinet I had was uh, ugly color yellow. What I did was I painted it pure white. These little pieces here are wood. You glue them on and then you paint over them. These knobs, I went to Home Depot, Lowe's, and couldn't find anything to match. I actually went around the corner to a hardware store and found them and they match perfectly for my kitchen. We're going to go back to the top of my kitchen up here. These are actually hand painted. They were a totally different color. I painted them black and white to match my kitchen. At any point, black on this side, black and white on this side, and I added the black feathers to give it a nice color to my kitchen. And if you go back to the top here, everything matches. Everything is black and white black and white. This piece right here I made from my computer. It's actually a picture frame but I made it black and white to match my computer and it really gives that whole nice black and white look. Wow. Over here's Grand Prix. Now we're getting back to this. This is the last part of this paella. Now that you notice that it is actually boiling then is when you put the shrimp in. Okay? You add the shrimp. This is uncooked deveined shrimp. This is the last piece before we add the rice. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh my God. Trust me, if you was here, you want to take a pie at home with yourself. If this is something that it stays, like I said, it stays in my family recipe. Again, now is when we put the rice. You add the rice in slowly by hand. Everything goes into one dish. That's the good thing about this paella. The rice has been cleaned and drained. We got rid of all our starch. The good thing about this dish is very, very healthy. Put that to the side. We give it one good mix. And right here I made enough to feed a good four to five people. Once you mix that in very well, put the lid back on the kitchen, the pot. Then you're going to take your fire and lower it. all the way to a low and we're going to let that simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. Once that's done, the rice is going to fill up. This is one complete meal. Okay, cool. the food is cooking, I'm going to bring you over here to my nice little dinette area. I want you to notice here that this tablecloth was actually a very large tablecloth that I bought for Marshalls. And what I did was I cut it so it could match my table. 
I actually made napkins to match from the same piece, okay? These here, what you're gonna love, these are not napkin holders. These came that you use for the bathroom. These are shower hooks, but I couldn't find anything nice to match. So what I did was I made them as napkin holders, okay? Again, these plates, I couldn't find them nowhere. I finally found something in Marshalls to match. I love the black and white. It actually matches very nice to my kitchen. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here. This is made from the same piece of material. I actually made it myself. My mother taught me how to sew. These curtains, I made myself. This, I made myself. And then we're gonna go over here to the chairs. These chairs were actually all black. And what I did was I still had enough material left over to cover the chairs myself. And I put a piece of plastic over them so it could last for a long time. And as you notice, the chairs match the table. Everything came from one piece of material that I bought from Marshalls that I made myself. So the whole kitchen is my little area where I sit down to eat. And in a few seconds, I think we're going to get ready to have this paella. And I'm going to come back to you in about a minute because the paella should be ready. If you can come close, you'll get the chance to see it's almost ready. We're going to let this rice, I tip the top off so that the water could come off. And as you see, as I'm stirring it, it's almost ready. Oh my God, Queen, it is so delicious. It smells fantastic. We're going to give that a little stir one more time. And just wait. This is going to be awesome. Once the water boils down, we are ready to eat. I'm going to put the spoon to the side. And I'm going to put the top on top and give it another 15 or 20 minutes. Once we're ready, we're going to have one more meal for the holiday. Okay, Queen, now we're back to my setting and my table. What I'm going to do first, of course, you got to light your candle. Candles are ready lit. Take my napkin, set it here on my lap. And of course, when you have your meal, you've got to have a fabulous bottle of wine. White Zivendale always go great with paella. Pour my wine. Sounds delicious. We let the wine air out a little bit. Oh my God, this meal is gonna be amazing. And Queen, I have a plate here for you. Whenever you're ready to come out, my house is your house. And by the way, Queen, I make a mean bottle of Coquito. And I actually have one here with your name on it. And it says, To Queen Latifah, your number one fan, David Badeja. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you. Hope to see you soon. I'm about to have my meal. Next time, you're going to be here with me having it. Love you, Queen. Have a great one. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Ciao. Mm-mm-mm.